Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it's Friday. So we're gonna talk about my week, my weigh-in and the WW workshop topic. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a weigh-in every Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Check out the description box down below where you will find nutrition coaching. Highly recommend personalized macros and calories. This is how I've lost and maintained my 140 pound weight loss as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for accountability to ask your questions or talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our Facebook group. It's free, it's supportive, and we would love to have you. So let's talk about my week, my weigh-in, and this week's workshop topic. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had a fantastic, amazing week. I had a fantastic week this week. I had a huge, huge, huge NSV, had a few revelations, had a few interesting things happen with the scale. I had a good week overall. I wanna first tell you guys about my big NSV for the week. If you follow me on Instagram or you're part of my Facebook group, you already know that on Saturday, me and my boot camp group hiked what is known as Pikachu Peak here in Arizona. It's a peak, it's a mountain, and it is an intense hike. Literally the sign at the bottom of the trail says that this is a difficult hike. And let me tell you, it's a difficult hike. You literally climb up the side of a mountain, you get to what's called the saddle, which is the top of the first part of the mountain, and then you hike to the actual peak. Now for me, based on my cosmetic surgery, I was only able to go to the saddle part of the hike, which is that middle ground. The rest of my group made their way all the way to the top. I'll obviously pop pictures in here for you. They said it was pretty intense, a lot of upper body pulling yourself up, which is just not something I can do right now. But let me tell you, I'm going back. I'm going back and I'm going to the top of the peak and I'm so excited. I know that we were planning on doing the mountain climb again, maybe in October, because let me tell you, it was hot. It was real hot. It was in the 90s. I was just dripping, dripping sweat. I was dirty. There was lots of bees. I saw a rattlesnake, the first rattlesnake I've seen since moving to Arizona. I'm just cruising along the trail and I glance over and there he is on the side of the trail. So obviously I let him cross the trail and then I walked by. But let me tell you, I felt amazing hiking even to that middle ground. It was so hard. It was probably one of the hardest hikes that I've ever done. But I felt so accomplished up there. It was it was amazing and I'm really proud of myself for doing that and I can't wait to go back and hike all the way to the top. Obviously, I'll share that with you guys, but stay tuned, it's coming. It's coming in October or November because at that point I should be fully cleared for all physical activity. I can't wait, but that was a huge NSV this week for me. I also got in all of my boot camp workouts. I did all of my gym workouts. And in fact, tomorrow I'm actually going to hike to Mamak, which is the mountain in Tucson that I love to hike up. So I'll be sharing, of course, that on Facebook and Instagram. So again, follow me there to kind of keep up with me a little bit more day to day. But overall, between the NSVs, all the good food that I ate this week, Troy and I went out to dinner a couple of times. I had a really, really good week overall. But before I jump into my weigh-in, because like I said, we had an interesting week on the scale, let's talk about the workshop topic from Weight Watchers. And this is stressed, take five and try this. I really like when we talk about stress because if you didn't know, when we're stressed out, our cortisol levels increase naturally in our body, which is which can lead to weight gain. You can actually see the scale fluctuate just based on stress alone. So managing our stress the best that we can is really important for not only our mental health, but for our weight loss as well. So try this. Five, take a few deep breaths, look around and name five things you see. Four, keep breathing deeply, pinpoint four things you can physically feel. Three, close your eyes and listen. What three things can you hear? Two, inhale and exhale again. Notice two things that you smell. And one, focus on one thing you can taste. Nothing, sip a drink or even apply some lip balm. Finish with one last deep breath and then continue with your day. This little five second 
can really help us in stressful situations, whether that's in your personal life, your family life, your work life, or all of the above. When we're stressed out, not only does our cortisol levels increase, but we generally reach for unhealthy foods. It's just a natural human reaction when we're sad, stressed, angry, to reach for food. And these high levels of stress can affect our hormones, which actually leads to excess fat storage in the abdomen. So not only are we increasing our cortisol, we're reaching for unhealthy foods. We are also affecting our hormones and adding extra fat to our abdomen. None of this sounds like a good time to me. So before this happens, learn how to manage your stress a little bit better. And I really like taking those five little steps. It'll take all of a minute or two to de-stress. Things like yoga are really good. Meditation are also good things that you can do in times of stress. I know for me, I like to just take a minute and I'm going to start utilizing these five little tricks from Weight Watchers, but I like to just take a minute and kind of zen out. Close my eyes, breathe and focus on feeling less stressed out. I luckily am able to manage my stress pretty good. I'm also lucky that I'm not a stress eater. When I'm sad or stressed, I don't eat. I have less of an appetite, but I can find myself getting a little stressed out and overwhelmed at times. And I think these tips and tricks from Weight Watchers are a great thing to incorporate to manage that stress, manage the hunger, manage the hormone fluctuation, and manage the excess fat gain in our abdomen. As always, there's three amazing fast facts from Weight Watchers. Number one, worrying about the past or what might happen in the future often causes stress. Number two, when feeling stressed, you're more likely to overeat. And number three, pausing to anchor your thoughts in the present moment can help you reduce your body's response to stress. Again, taking that five-step approach to reducing stress can be really beneficial. It looks like the next couple weeks topic are going to be about stress and just mindfulness and having a successful weight loss journey, which I'm really excited about. Again, if you find yourself to be someone who's a stress eater, make sure that you do your best to manage that. Don't derail your progress and, 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 and ruin all the hard work you've put in this week because of stress. And do your best to manage the stress that you have control of in your life. And again, learn how to manage the stress you don't have control of as well. Rather than leaning for food, find other alternatives for stress management. So I really like this topic. And again, I think it's beneficial for everybody because every single one of us has stress in our life, whether we're able to manage it more effectively or not, these tips and tricks from Weight Watchers definitely help. Speaking of weight and weight loss and weight fluctuation, let's talk about my weigh-in for the week. This week was very, very, very interesting on the scale. As I've went throughout my weight loss journey, I'm learning more and more and more about my body. If you didn't know, I'm almost 48 years old. I would say that I'm perimenopause. I haven't experienced any menopause symptoms yet, but I, but my mom actually went through full menopause at 50. So I feel like I'm definitely right on the cusp of getting into menopause and I'm noticing some interesting weight related things throughout the month. It's very important in my opinion to track your cycle. So I use the flow app. I'm able to track my cycle that way and it just helps me be more aware of what my body's doing hormonally throughout the month, which shows up on the scale. Let me tell you. So what I've noticed with my body is during my ovulation phase, my weight always goes up and it can go up two to three pounds during that entire week, which can be really scary when you're stepping on the scale every day and your weight is up or maintaining at an upper higher weight, it can be really, really concerning. And then I find that the week prior to my cycle, my weight is also up, generally not for the whole week, but for a few days. And then for me, I am at my leanest up a couple of days before my cycle. And again, once my cycle completes. So that is kind of what I notice month to month with being a woman and with my cycle. And like I said, it can be really scary to step on the scale and see the weight literally jump up overnight and then stay there and not go down. Well, I'm in ovulation phase right now. So that's exactly what has happened for me this week. Literally overnight, my scale jumped up almost three pounds. What I remember is that it's just a fluctuation. So there's a big difference, you guys, between a weight gain and a weight fluctuation. This is all just a fluctuation based on hormones. You can have weight fluctuations based on anything. How much sodium you consume, exercise, are you sore? Did you break down your muscles? Are they inflamed? Your cycle. You can also have a weight fluctuation based on the amount of carbohydrates that you ate before. What you have to figure out is it's just a fluctuation. It's not a weight gain and don't beat yourself up over it and know that chances are the scale is going to go right back down once that fluctuation is over. Did you know that it is impossible? I mean, impossible to gain three pounds overnight. 
It's impossible. You would have had to eat 3,500 calories times three above your maintenance the day before to gain three pounds overnight. Please don't live and die by the scale. Please focus on the scale just as a one little tool of measurement. And remember that weight fluctuation is a million trillion percent normal. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Your weight isn't always going to do this. Your weight is going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to stay the same. That is normal. And that is to be expected on the weight loss journey. So speaking of weight fluctuation, when I got on the scale today at the end of the week of my scale being up all week, my scale's still up. I'm actually up 1.4 pounds from where I was last week. Am I concerned about it? No. Is it a weight fluctuation? Yes. Will it go away? Yes. Absolutely. I didn't gain 1.4 pounds this week. I didn't eat upwards of 6,000 calories this week over my maintenance calories. So logically I know it's not a weight gain. It's a weight fluctuation. So it is what it is. I'm not worried about it at all. And I anticipate next week for that to be gone, for all of that to be gone, the majority of that to be gone, or potentially for my weight to be even lower. I was actually really looking forward to sharing my weight with you guys this week because as a coach, as a weight loss and nutrition coach, my clients will freak out if their weight changes at all in the negative, if it goes up at all. And it's always just a weight fluctuation and it always just goes away. So I wanted to share my experience with you and let you know that it's totally normal. Don't worry about it. Stay off the scale if it bothers you. Weigh yourself next week and I promise that fluctuation will go away. Scientifically, the scale will always, always catch up. When that happens, I don't know, but the scale will always catch up. So this week I'm up 1.4 pounds. I'm not mad about it. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and I anticipate that'll be gone by the next weigh in. Let me know. Do you guys understand the difference between a weight gain and a weight fluctuation? Do fluctuations bother you? Let me know down below what your thoughts are on the topic, as well as how you manage your stress, share your tips and tricks down below. Also, let me know how was your week? How was your weigh-in? Did you gain? Did you lose? How are you feeling about your weight loss journey overall as we are now in the month of August? You guys, this year is almost over. We're in month eight of 12 already. Christmas is around the corner. Thanksgiving, Halloween, all my favorite time of year is around the corner and I'm excited about it. The last 90 days of the year are almost here. It is time to buckle up, put on our big girl panties and knock out the rest of this year strong. Let me know how you guys are feeling down below. And if you enjoyed another weigh in video, of course, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on. I would love to have you here. And like I said, I share my weigh in every single Friday. Don't forget to check out the description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And of course, come join my Facebook group, follow me on Instagram, keep up with me a little bit more day to day. Happy Friday, friends. Happy weekend. Happy August. And I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye. 